Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to discuss something in a lot more detail uh, than I have before. So I've mentioned the topic of uh, derivatives and how Newton actually influenced the way calculus developed, but it didn't have to develop the way Newton uh, influenced it so that it did develop. And uh, I know that some time ago, some years ago, I actually shared uh, a little hint of this in an applet with you, but now I'm going to explain to you that uh, calculus could have been developed entirely differently to the formulation, the initial formulation by Newton, Leibniz, and all the other mainstream academics. And in fact, uh, the new calculus is uh, uh, the first rigorous formulation. So it, it takes Newton's ideas and uh, formulates a new calculus, which is not just a rigorous calculus, but has many, many added features and theorems that are not possible in standard calculus. So let me t talk to you now about how things could have turned out if uh, Newton hadn't influenced calculus the way that. So let's begin. So in one of the very first applets that I created um, in the new calculus lessons, I showed you that every straight line has a slope. But in what way does a, a straight line have a slope? Well, it has a slope in terms of right angles. Okay, so this would be uh, one right angle. Uh, don't, there you go. One right angle, two right angles, approximately 180 degrees or pi radians. Okay, and so on. Okay, so the Greeks had lines that uh, had a slope in every no matter what the inclination was, okay? So what Newton did was he decided to use rise over run. So all your calculus is based on this concept of rise over run or a finite difference, taking the y uh, over the x for a given line and calling that the slope. And basically a bigger slope means uh, a steeper one and so on and of course a negative one means leaning in the opposite direction so uh, so what Newton did was is he took the tangent ratio of the angle and by the way true uh, circular measure is in radians not angles okay so um, so he took the tangent of the radian and that would result in a slope which is 0 0.54 okay and so if you had a slope like that, um, it says in Newton's calculus that there is no such slope. In other words, it's infinite, but that's not the case. It's actually pi over two radians, okay? So the slope of any vertical line is pi over two radians. I'm not going to spend too much time with this. Let's get rid of this. And so now, the very first thing I'd like to show you is that uh, every function uh, no matter what the function is, has a derivative at every point, whether there's a continuity or a discontinuity or not, there's still a, der a derivative there. If, for example, the derivative function takes on the y-ordinate as a slope in terms of radians, okay? So, for example, let's look at this function x squared. If we're going to uh, plot the new function, that's that red function that you see there. Okay, so this would be the derivative function for y is equal to x squared, the one that you see in red. And, and you'll notice also that uh, in this particular case, the, all the derivatives lie between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay, so this whole region here tells you everything. And the most interesting part is the one close to the origin. As you can see, as you move along, uh, the values tend closer and closer to one of these two asymptotes, all right? So, and it's very interesting that if you choose another function like x to the 4, okay, 
you'll see that um, when you plot the derivative, you'll get a slightly uh, different shape of the derivative function. And of course, that lies also uh, between uh, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. As you see, these dotted lines here are pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So this function has a similar curve. And again, you, you might be t inclined to think that some of the values are the same, but they're not. No function has the same set of radians in even though the curves look very similar and they are similar looking for most of the functions. Okay, but there are some interesting things about this which I haven't shown you before and we'll get to in a moment. So that's really uh, what we're doing here is we're plotting the same x-coordinate and the y-coordinate is just the radian measure. So there's always a derivative. So let's see how that works uh, in terms of another function that actually has a discontinuity. So if you look at this function here, 1 divided by x plus 1 <coughs> plus 1, then you'll see it has a discontinuity at minus 1, but not in the new calculus. Uh, not, uh, not new calculus. This is a new calculus. This is part of my uh, unpublished work, what you had to know in mathematics and your teachers couldn't tell you. So you're actually lucky I'm sharing this with you because nobody else ever thought of this. But in any case, as you approach this point here, which is minus 1, there is a derivative there. It's minus pi over 2, as you see over here where I'm pointing, okay? Minus pi over 2. And so the derivative of this function looks like that. And once again, it lies between, uh, between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And some functions have an even closer uh, restriction or a boundary of uh, values. So I'll show you one of those functions in a minute. But this is very interesting uh, to see here. And you'll notice that <clears throat> even if I had to change this function around and say that, then I could easily change this point here. Um, let's make the red point, actually. I want the red point. I don't know if I can get point E. All right, doesn't matter. But even if we try to trace that, now it's going to take the opposite the opposite side, okay? So over here by 1, there's also a derivative there. Do you see that? But it always lies between those boundaries. So without spending too much time, let me get rid of that and go to some of the more interesting ones. So we have here... Um, this particular function, which there is an asymptote, uh, there, well, actually, there's a, so in the mainstream calculus, which is flawed, there happens to be a there happens to be a tangent line at x equals to pi, right? So if you go over here, and let me just make that window smaller, and you say x equals to pi, like so. Okay, so that's that line, that black line that you see there, right? Now, um, if we want to trace this, in mainstream calculus, there is no derivative there at that point. But in this case, there will be a derivative, okay? Because it's based on the angular measure as slope. And if you, if you look at the curve of the derivative of this function here, which is x the third root of x minus pi plus 2, that's what it looks like. And, of course it will still lie between the two boundaries, okay? And now there are some functions that have an even closer uh, boundary demarcation, as I'll show you in a moment. But this is interesting uh, because it shows you that it doesn't really matter whether you have uh, a tangent line that is vertical or horizontal, there is always a derivative, and this is a derivative function, okay? So let's leave that alone. I will place a link to this applet in the details section. And I'll look at the last one now. So for the last one, what I've done is I've taken the normal distribution function, which I'm sure most of you do know. And I'm going to show you again how that looks like. Let's just make this wider. Uh, how that looks like when we plot the derivative, right? So the derivative of that function looks like this and notice that it is it has an even an even smaller 
uh, area where it has an even smaller area where all the values are concentrated as you can see there right so I mean pi over 2 is somewhere over here and minus pi over 2 is somewhere over here so there are special functions which have an even greater restriction on pi but most not noticeable is that the interesting values of in fact every derivative function lie very close to the origin over here and I do have a formula by the way that I'm not going to share with you a formula that actually tells you what the boundary on the x-axis is for all the derivatives in that region. Uh, now, incidentally, I've read some dissertations where they've come close to realizing that information, but they didn't because they're too stupid and they're basing their ideas on the flawed mainstream calculus. So this is very interesting, and I thought I'd share it with you to show you uh, that even if Newton hadn't focused so much on rise of run, you probably would have been looking at a far more streamlined, far more powerful, far more efficient calculus, okay? And of course, I discuss these uh, details a lot more in my unpublished uh, work. I don't think it will ever be published, but I'm not going to share anything more along those lines. So this is a new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. <clears throat> if you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber. By the way, take note, if you are a subscriber and you click the subscribe button, you're going to unsubscribe, so don't do that. Uh, make sure you click like, because I am the target of mainstream uh, academics. They are eventually going to shut down this channel too. I want to uh, bring to your attention that most of the videos on my YouTube, in fact, all of them have been backed up onto library.tv, L-B-R-Y.tv. So you can ac access all of them on that site. Okay, and now I don't think I can talk anymore because I'm totally out of breath. I'm going to stop here and uh, wish you all uh, safe holidays. Don't uh, do anything stupid like going to crowded areas, uh, practice social distancing, wear masks, and if you can, get the vaccine, especially if you're old. <laughs> what does it matter if you're old, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'll talk to you again sometime in the near future once I have uh, the energy to create another video. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Goodbye.